A secret cache of Crusader era coins has been found beneath an ancient port city in Israel. Over the past few decades, a number of significant archaeological discoveries have been uncovered in the ancient Israeli city of Sesarai. From studying ancient harbors to Roman amphitheaters, experts have been able to slowly paint a picture of what life was like in this place throughout the ages. And at the end of 2018, a new find served to add even more color. Located today within the borders of modern-day Israel, the city of Sesarai has had a long and varied history. It was initially established by Herod the Great, a king of Judea who ruled from 37 BC to 4 BC. Herod's reign was supported by the Roman Senate at the time, effectively making him a puppet leader for Rome. Throughout the time of Herod, Caesarea was an important city within Judea. Initially known as Caesarea Maritama, it's thought to have been constructed within the vicinity of an old naval base between 25 BC and 13 BC. In 22 BC, a deep sea harbor was built for the city and it later served as a base for Herod's navy, which itself served the Romans. Caesarea eventually grew to be the capital of Roman Judea. As such, it was a pivotal location in the initial stages of the new religion of Christianity. In fact, the city is mentioned a number of times in the Bible, with one section recounting the time that the figure of Paul was held there as a prisoner. Many Jews throughout Judea were unhappy with life under Roman rule, resulting in a number of rebellions. The first of these took place in 66 AD and was fought for some seven years. A second is thought to have occurred in 115 AD and a third happened in 132 AD. The third Jewish uprising, which is known as the Bar Korba Revolt, was put down in 136 AD. Though disputed, some historians argue that as a consequence of the rebellion, the Romans then sought to eradicate the heritage of Judea. As a result, the name of Caesarea was changed to Syria Palestina, which later simply became Palestina. The word Palestine can be traced back to the Greeks, who used something similar to describe the area from which the Philistines came. The Philistines were a group who lived in the region during the 12th century BC. After the Romans brought back the word Palestina, it slipped into Arabic usage and has continued to be used over the centuries. By 390 AD, the Byzantine Empire ruled over the region and had set up a province known as Palestina Prima. The Byzantine Empire was the eastern form of the Roman Empire, which managed to outlive the western section. The city of Caesarea was the capital of Palestina Prima. As the capital of the province of Palestina Prima, Caesarea was at the time considered to be an important religious center. Indeed, it remained as such through the 5th and 6th centuries, but in the year 614 AD, the city then went through some major changes. From the year 602 AD to 628 AD, the Byzantine Empire was at war with the Sasanian Empire. During this time, the Sasanians managed to take control of Caesarea. They held the city for a number of years before the Byzantines managed to recapture it in 625 AD. This time around, however, the Byzantines' rule over Caesarea was short-lived. Throughout the beginning of the 7th century, a Muslim conquest swept through the Arab world, and in 640 AD, Caesarea fell to it and parts of the city were supposedly ruined in the process. Some historians have suggested that Caesarea's population dwindled somewhat during its time under Arab rule. Indeed, the city's harbor, though remaining functional for a time, seems to have become inoperative by the 9th century. Two centuries later, however, it seems that the city once again grew strong and was now protected by fortifications. In 1047, a Persian scholar by the name of Nasir i Khrushchev wrote about Caesarea as it had been during that time. He explains that it was a fine city with running waters and palm gardens and orange and citron trees. Its walls are strong and has an iron gate. There are fountains that gush out within the city. Change, however, was again set to wash over Caesarea. After speaking in 1095 at the Council of Claremont, Pope Urban II ordered the capture of lands under the rule of the Muslims. That same year, the First Crusade began, lasting until 1099. Following the conclusion of the First Crusade, one of its commanders, Baldwin I, took control of Caesarea in 1101, and a number of accounts have suggested that this campaign was particularly brutal. According to Michael the Syrian, an important member of the Syriac Orthodox Church who died in 1199, the city was devastated. The medieval historian William of Tyre wrote that Baldwin's siege on Caesarea lasted some 15 days. 
He explained that catapults had been used and that by the time the campaign had ended, the city had descended into crime and further violence. At this point, Caesarea had become a part of the Crusader state of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Control of the city continued to fluctuate over the following years, going from Muslim rule and back to the Crusaders. By 1251, Louis IX of France tried to ensure the protection of the city by building tall walls and a moat. However, the Islamic Mamluks captured the city in 1265. The Mamluks decided to totally destroy Sasrai so that it could not again reestablish itself as a fortress. And so the city remained in a state of wreckage until the 19th century approached its end. But then in 1884, Bosnian immigrants known as the Bushnaks set up a fishing community there. Rule of the city was yet again overturned in 1948. Indeed, this was when a Palmach unit led by Yitzhak Rabin managed to take control of the area. The Palmach were a specialized group of the Jewish underground army, which was known as the Haganah. Finally, in 1952, a new Jewish-controlled town was set up beside the remnants of the ancient Caesarea. In fact, the old and new cities are located about 1.2 miles from one another. The site of the old ruins has been designated as a national park, a feat that was achieved in 2011. So, given the long, vast, and utterly varied history of Caesarea, it should go without saying that its ruins have proven to be a focus of archaeological inquiry. Over recent decades, artifacts and structures have been found which originated from the city's time under its various rulers, and investigations have even focused on the harbor which was built all the way back in the time of Herod. Specifically, though, various Roman ruins discovered in Caesarea have proven fascinating. From the middle of the 20th century, a number of archaeological excavations have unearthed significant structures built by the Romans, including a 20,000-seater hippodrome, a temple, and an amphitheater. Later in 1961, an inscription which bears the name of Pontius Pilate was discovered. This inscription was considered extremely significant when it was discovered. Pontius Pilate is thought to have been a Roman governor who ruled Judea when Jesus was said to have been crucified. And this inscription was the first discovery to mention Pilate, which could actually be dated back to the time in which he lived. During the same decade as the discovery of the Pilate inscription, a container holding silver and gold jewels was also recovered in an area of Caesarea. Then, three decades later, an array of bronze artifacts was also found within the same general vicinity. These are all now reportedly exhibited within the Jerusalem-based Israel Museum. Given that past discoveries within the specific location in Caesarea, it's not surprising that excavation works have continued up to the present day. And in December 2018, archaeologists announced yet another find there, and this time around, the newly found treasures were particularly rare. The archaeologists working in the area unearthed a golden earring and a collection of 24 coins, thought to be from the 11th century. These were held within a bronze container, which itself is thought to be a considerable find. However, it's the coins for which the archaeological community is most intensely enthused. Eighteen of the 24 coins are known as Fatimi dinars, which was once the local currency of Caesarea under the Islamic rule and the Fatimid Caliphate. As such, Fatimid dinars have been discovered in the area before and are not considered particularly unusual. These specific coins have not yet been dated but are estimated to derive from the 11th century. The true objects of interest are the other six coins. These come from the Christian Byzantine Empire and are thought to date back to the year 1079. The find is considered particularly unusual for the area that they managed to make their way from the Christian Byzantines over to Islamic Caesarea. Speaking in December 2018 to the Times of Israel, a coin expert by the name of Dr. Robert Kuhl emphasized the significance of the discovery. On the whole, they are very, very rare, he said. These coins usually did not travel beyond the political borders of the Byzantine Empire. It's been established that the Byzantine coins are made of 22 karat gold. According to Dr. Kuhl, these were not generally in circulation throughout the area in which they were discovered. This, he believes, points towards the existence of a trading relationship between Caesarea and Constantinople during the 11th century. The coins themselves are thought to have been extremely valuable within their time. For context, it's been suggested that a single coin would have been equivalent to a local farmer's yearly wage. Indeed, from this point alone, we might reasonably extrapolate that the owner of the collection was quite affluent. The coins and their bronze container were excavated from a well in a house thought to trace back roughly to between the years 909 and 1171. 
and the manner in which the treasures were stored away seems to indicate that their owner had been hoping to conceal them from an external danger. There's a feeling that the hoard was put away in quite a quick way, as Dr. Cool put it to the Times of Israel. In fact, even the bronze container itself is indicative of the theory that its owners were hoping to stash them away before making an escape. The people who hid the treasures broke a piece of ceramic and put it as a stopgap lid so the coins wouldn't fall out, Dr. Cool explained. It really seems to add up to the Crusader conquest, which was a pretty dramatic event. Dr. Cool was referring to Baldwin I's Crusade, which swept through Caesarea in 1101. This particular event saw the Fatimid Caliphate, which then ruled over the region, wiped out. It was an extremely violent campaign, and many of the people who had lived under Fatimid rule were murdered or enslaved. Written accounts have suggested that many of those within Caesarea during this crusade were slaughtered. Therefore, as the excavation's leaders, Dr. Peter Gendelman and Mohammed Hattar, have suggested, it's likely that the person who hid the coins was also killed. It's reasonable to assume that the treasure's owner and his family perished in the massacre or were sold into slavery and therefore were not able to retrieve their gold, they said in a statement. Hattar and Dr. Gendelman continue to work in Caesarea, and moreover, it seems that they're not the only people interested in the area. The Edmund de Rothschild Foundation, for instance, has funded the operation with some $40 million. The vice chairman of the group says that the works are intended to allow hundreds of thousands of tourists from Israel and around the world to access the wonders of Caesarea. In fact, this is the very same sentiment which is echoed by Dr. Robert Kuhl. Shortly after the discovery, he actually allowed a number of children touring the site to see the gold coins, and by his own admission, they were grateful for the chance to gaze upon them. The coins are so beautiful, and the children were so happy to see them, Dr. Kuhl recalled for the Times of Israel. That's what we do it for, to bring it to the public. And before finishing up his conversation with the online newspaper, he pointed out that the discovery had come about at a fitting time, during Hanukkah. Towards the end of each year, Jewish people celebrate the festival of Hanukkah. This lasts for eight days and nights, and for some Jews it represents an important occasion. And the fact that the stash of gold coins was found at this time had not been lost on Dr. Cool. A little vessel, albeit bronze, but full of Islamic and Christian coins, found close to the Jewish feast of Hanukkah. I find it significant, Dr. Cool reflected to the Times of Israel. You can be cynical about it, but on the other hand, for us in terms of archaeology, it's a small miracle to find something like that.